welcome back to the Not Carrie Bradshaw YouTube channel. In this video, we are recapping episode six of Insecure, Low Key Done. This episode was, it gave me real um, Atlanta, the show, not the city. Shouts out to my hometown though. It gave me Atlanta on FX vibes. It didn't, it wasn't very um, drama or plot intensive, but it was more like, a day in the life and I think a lot of shows tend to have at least one episode like this where they just focus in on a singular character and kind of follow them as they go about their day and it looks like the next episode is gonna be like a day in the life of Molly I wonder if it's just gonna be those two who get like a day in the life type episodes or if all the girls will get one because I would really love to see an episode on Tiffany and how she's hopefully gonna address her postpartum depression anyway so once again i'm just gonna um go through and talk about the things that stood out to me in this episode like we don't need to do like a scene by scene recap because girl who has the time so first of all the just to kind of backtrack a little bit the episode opens up with Issa wearing a really really nice white crop top i would really like the details on that Actually, I know one of the costume designers. I'm going to send a text. Anyway, um, and she's ruminating on the previous night. She's hearing the things that Molly said to her. Not the things that she said to Molly, but the things that Molly said to her are replaying in her head, and you can tell that they have really gotten to her. Ruminating over a traumatic event is almost as bad as the traumatic event itself because you're really stuck in your own head just going over and over again wondering like oh should I have said this maybe I should have said that or did I go too far and you question and you pull apart and you dissect every part of something I really hate ruminating it's a thing that I'm actively working on right now in therapy is to like stop doing that because it's you're reliving the trauma over and over again in your own mind and it's a fucking struggle I hate it I really was happy to see that despite the fight breaking out at the end, um, despite the possible gun, knife, wallet, whatever it was that broke up the event, Issa is getting all this really positive feedback on her block party. And I'm, I'm genuinely so happy for her because I'm sure she felt like she had probably ruined her own night. So I was really happy to see that she got so much positive feedback from it. And also, I was wondering, did Issa make any money off of this? I don't know. I mean, I, I guess it doesn't matter, but it kind of does. Um, the next thing we see is uh, I love the call between her and Nathan because it was so friendly. It was just, hey, I just want to check on you, whatever, whatever. I'm still on the fence about whether or not I want them to get back together um, or get together, period. Maybe it could just be a really good friendship or maybe there's still something there. I can't tell if I want her to pursue it or not. I'm not sure. You know, maybe some people are just meant to be your friend, your fine ass friend with a really good voice. He can come be my friend. Anyway, um, oh, so Issa's also getting all these, um, you know, phone calls and voicemails from everybody except Molly, but I was so happy to see slash hear the voicemail from her brother Amal because like I said, it really annoyed me in previous seasons how mean he was to her like I feel like he gave Issa like no slack or whatever like if you remember when she was like homeless basically and he gave her all those rules about staying with him and it's just I'm really happy to see him being softer towards her and reassuring her like don't let Molly ruin anything for you you did a great job I thought that was amazing so I also really liked the convo with mirror bitch when she was like you don't need to call her you're always the first one to reach out i felt that in my spirit because i have been in that position a dozen times where i felt like previously i'm not that person no more but where i felt like a person wronged me and i wanted to be the one to fix it you shouldn't have to always fix things if both people and in this situation i think both molly and Issa drop the ball in terms of communication in their friendship 
But I'm sorry, I, I still just feel like Molly was the trash friend here and Molly needs to be the one to reach out. I feel like Issa's always making concessions for Molly, like that parking spot. I will never get over that parking spot. Issa shouldn't have given up that parking spot and Molly was an asshole for expecting her to. So, that's my spiel on that. I agree with Mira, bitch. Like, take care of yourself. If she wants to reach out, she can reach out. And let's move on with our day, like... I really, really, that scene really resonated with me because I've had to have that conversation with myself so many times where I think sometimes we want to communicate on behalf of a person because we feel like they don't know how to say a certain thing, um, especially with guys. Anyway, another video for another day. So I also liked how Issa resorted to cleaning up her space as a means to make herself feel better. I really especially during quarantine time, your space has to be clean so that you can feel okay having to be in it all the time. Um, or at least me, because apparently I'm the only person still following social distancing rules. Anyway, um, I think that changes your whole energy, honestly. Um, it's just having a clean space that you like and that you're comfortable in, especially for that space to be your home. And I also, just to back up a little bit, I like that Nathan reassured Issa that you didn't do anything wrong. I don't feel like you're using me. You needed help. I was happy to help. Sometimes you need that reassurance when a person who you love or trust, like Molly, says some shit that's kind of a dig and you start to question like, well, damn, this person knows me so well. Maybe there's some truth to that. Maybe I do use people. So I was really happy that Nathan reassured her that that's not the case with them. Um... So Issa gets out, decides to paint the town red, and I'm going to just say this thing about the lady in the grocery store. I just assumed that it was a scam because typically a pregnant person, you know, panhandling gets at least a response from someone. And the fact that nobody was paying her attention, I was like, she must be like the neighborhood Felicia or like a scammer or something because she did have like a lot of pampers and stuff in there for a baby that was in utero so i was like hold up but the devastation of the fact that like Issa really couldn't even help her out like she wanted to i was like damn embarrassing <laughs> um i will never forget one time my car declined you know what i'm not gonna tell y'all that yet we not that close i said that story another day anyway so Issa takes her giant jug of pinot to a sip and paint class i was so excited to see kyla pratt like honestly it was like seeing an old friend or like a cousin who you don't see that often because we really grew up with kyla pratt so i was really happy to see her and it had me thinking about when you move to a new space or you move into a new season in your life and you Start trying to step out and do things on your own. Like, I do a lot of stuff by myself all the time in New York because it's just too hard to gather up a crew of people to do stuff. It's like, no, bitch, go out by yourself. It's fine. So, I loved that Issa went out by herself and did a thing. I was devastated the way that thing turned out. And especially because I love the conversation where they asked her, like, what do you do? When you are a creative and you're entering into a new venture and someone asks you what you do, it can be really hard to effectively communicate what it is because you don't want to sound like typical. Like I would never tell someone that I'm an influencer. I think when people ask me what I do, I mostly just say I'm a writer and oh, I have a podcast and a YouTube channel. And I even feel weird saying that because it just seems so trite these days because who amongst us isn't you know like doing something in that regard so I was really happy to hear her articulate this is what I do and she came up with the term cultural curator which I absolutely love and I was really happy to see those women like hype her up and like give her that kind of like assurance that I don't think her core group of friends ever gave her and again like super relatable because I went through that like when I first started writing even before I had the podcast long before I had this YouTube channel I really didn't feel like I got a lot of support from my core group of friends it was always like well I don't really even fully understand what you're doing or what you're trying to do but I support you and it was just very 
it felt like they didn't take me seriously enough and like the support just wasn't there. So I was really happy to see that group of women giving her this example of what a friendship can feel like. And the fact that those bitches dined and dashed on her, can I tell you how devastated I was that that scene wasn't real when she ran up on them? Because who dines and dashes and then just goes for a leisurely stroll down the block? You bitches better be putting feet to pavement. Like, are you kidding? I feel like they were asking to be run up on. And the fact that she didn't really do that, it made me so fucking mad because I want Issa to defend herself so much more than she actually does. Like, it, fr it frustrates me on a personal level. Like, bitch, stand up for yourself, please. Um, so that frustrated me. Oh, what the hell was up with Mr. George? We gonna call it him because I'm 32, but I still feel like if you're a person of a certain age, you are Mr. or Miss to me. Mr. George was every um, uncle that all of us have, like that one uncle. And was he going to reunite with his long lost son? Why do you have a picture of just the house? I thought, okay, let me see what I thought. I thought he was going to go and connect with like a long lost love. So when that dude answered the door and said, dad, I, what? The, again, this is one of those like Atlanta type things where it's kind of like a throwaway joke, but I'm hoping that that's an Easter egg for something that may come up again later. Because what was that? I didn't mind it. It was comical, but it was like, where does this fit in into anything? But I guess a day in the life is super random anyway. Like in your real life, things that happen to you are very random anyway. So it's fine, but also what? Um, so Issa then goes to see her mom. I enjoyed this conversation between Issa and her mom so much because talk about relatable. Once you hit a certain age, your mom starts feeling more comfortable telling you certain things that she never told you before. And my mom told me that she did not think that she could have kids, so she never expected to become a mother. And when it happened with both me and my brother, she was like, oh, okay. You know, so, and I never understood why people get so up in arms when they find out that their parents didn't plan for them. It's like big fucking deal. They didn't abort you. You're here. Like, so fucking what if you weren't planned? What is that? Somebody drop down in the comments and let me know why people be devastated that their parents didn't plan for them. Like, okay, girl, most people probably didn't. Anyway, um, I love that she said, but you and Amal are the best things in my life. That's an, a literal conversation that my mom and I had um, a few years ago where she was opening up to me a little bit more about her and my father's divorce, um, which happened when I was a very, 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 like I was a baby. I wasn't even walking. So like, I never cared about my parents being divorced. Hallelujah. Um, I got to avoid that whole feeling like my family was broken up thing. So that's another thing that I just can't relate. Like those two people never should have been together except to make me and my brother. So anyway, um, I love her maternal instinct. Um, Wendy Raquel Robinson, most people refer to her as Tasha Mack. She'll always be piggy grew to me from the Steve Harvey show. Um, I love so much that she just instinctively knew you need a hug. And I don't know if it's quarantine and the fact that I haven't seen my mom in months. I never go this long without seeing my mom. But I was just like, oh my God, I would kill for a hug from my mama right now. Like, there are just some things that only your mom or an auntie or someone with a ample bosom on which you can lay is some things that only that that's the remedy for that's the remedy for certain things in life you need an ample bosom to lay your head on and feel reassured that things will be okay Last week, I really wanted to just lay my head on Michelle Obama's bosom and have her tell me that I'm okay. Um, I still haven't finished watching Becoming. It was very emotional for me. Did anybody else feel like, oh my God? So, um, I like that Issa's mom reassured her, you're going into a new season. That's gonna mean it's gonna be painful. There's gonna be some growing pains and that's okay. You will figure it out. And at age 32, I know that 100% to be true. I think like in my 20s, people would try to tell me like, it's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. And I'll be like, you don't know. Like, it's not going to be fine. It's not fine right now. It's never going to be okay. And then you reach a certain point where it's like, shit sucks right now, but it really will eventually be okay. I think that's just a part of maturing and um, emotional maturity and actual just getting up there in age like, 
that's just what life is. It ebbs and flows. Sometimes it's really chaotic. Sometimes it's peaceful, but nothing is permanent. So I really enjoyed that conversation between her and her mom. So when Issa's leaving her mom's house, she finally calls Kelly back. I do not enjoy people trying to pressure Issa into reaching out to Molly. I think if, because to me, it's a little bit selfish. And let me explain why. You don't actually, maybe on some level you care about their friendship, sure. But you're also kind of anticipating how awkward it's going to be for the friend group. And you want them to squash their shit so that the group can continue to kiki. And it's really not about how Issa feels. And it's really not about how Molly feels. It's really not about the friendship. It's that y'all don't want to be uncomfortable. And that could be me being me projecting. But I just think that Molly screwed up in such a royal way where she ruined this really huge moment for Issa that if Issa never wants to fool with Molly again, respect her choice and don't try to pressure her into saying or doing something that she's not ready to do or that she doesn't want to do. And I'm sure Kelly means well and I think Again, I've been in this position before where I was like completely done with a person and allowed my friend group to to pressure me into being the bigger person. I told y'all I have issues with being the bigger person. I think at a certain point you're there's a fine line between being the bigger person and being a pushover, in my opinion. And if you make the decision or the choice that like I'm not fooling with this person right now your friend should respect that and shouldn't make you feel like you're being petty or immature or that you need to do something when you're the aggrieved party like that was super triggering for me and I was proud of Issa for standing her ground and for saying like girl did you hit Molly up with this same energy um to which Molly to, to which Kelly did say yes but still, don't call me. Like, I'm not the one who messed up here. And even if you feel like I'm the one who messed up, I don't want to fool with her right now. Respect that and move on with your day. Hello. Um, so I also really like that Issa went home, got cozy, and started responding to the Facebook messages in this way that it was very, it looked like her spirit had been reignited where it was like, oh, people genuinely like what I'm doing. Let me see what I can do next. That's one of the most amazing feelings as a creative entrepreneur. When people respond positively to something that you do, it gives you the extra drive to do something else. Like what else can I make happen? So Issa gets high, I support you girl, decides that she's gonna go get some food. Um, which made me think, I don't think I've ever had Ethiopian food before and I can't try it now because quarantine huh, you know anyway and she gets to the restaurant and she sees molly and i just knew she was gonna walk in and be like hey girl my bad can i tell you how happy i was that she just turned her ass around and and didn't engage that really made me happy because stand your ground girl like please um so that's this episode. It was, I know a lot of people weren't really happy with it because it wasn't very plot intensive. There wasn't a lot of action or a lot of drama. I think the comedy was a little bit more subdued. Like the intern called to ask about like the protocol for dating vendors. What? Um, <laughs> so I'm hoping, yeah, I didn't feel like there was going to be a whole lot to unpack here, but clearly there was. So, um, yeah, it was an interesting episode. It was a different vibe. It was a different pace. Uh, the comedy was a little bit different. And I think that we're seeing Issa really come into her own, which is the most that you can hope for in terms of character development. Because, like, we can only watch you be awkward and ridiculous and, and mess up but so many times, you know, in your life as a character. Like, the secondhand embarrassment gets to be a bit much. So I'm happy to see her character evolving. So we'll see what happens next episode. Let me know what you guys thought about this one. Drop down in the comments. Let's have a convo. Let me know. Um, subscribe to my channel and come back next week where we will be talking about the next episode. Thanks, guys. Bye.